In cooperation with Brent Brown Toyota of Orem, Utah, and assisted by Bryson Conk of our Product Development and Marketing Department, we will be installing our LRT 3-inch to 1-inch leveling lift kit on a 2016 Toyota Tacoma. Prior to installing the lift, we took measurements at three locations. The front fender measured 35 inches from the ground, the door handle measured 42 and an eighth inches, and the rear fender measured 36 and 3 eighths inches. We will compare these same measurements at the conclusion of the video. This job could easily be done with a floor jack and jack stands. However, to make these instructions clearer, we've chosen to use a twin post lift. Position the lift pads on the frame, as shown here, and raise the vehicle. Once the lift is at a good working height and securely locked, remove the driver's side front wheel using an impact wrench and a 21mm socket. Disconnect the sway bar link using a 17mm socket. Tap the link out of the knuckle using a brass hammer. Take care not to damage the threads. Remove the passenger side wheel assembly. Disconnect the passenger side sway bar link. Remove the lower control arm shock absorber mounting nut by holding it with a 19mm wrench and turning the bolt using a 19mm socket. Begin removing the belly pan by removing the four bolts using a 12mm socket. Once all the bolts are removed, drop the rear of the pan down, then slide it forward unhooking it in the front. To make realigning this vehicle a little easier, mark all four of the adjustment cams so they can be restored to their approximate location during reassembly. After marking the adjustment cams, loosen the driver's side inner control arm bushings using a 22mm box end wrench. Be aware that these inner control arm fasteners only need to be loosened not removed. Disconnect the lower ball joint from the steering knuckle using a 19 millimeter socket. While supporting the lower control arm, remove the lower shock mount bolt and let the lower control arm swing down out of the way. Remove the rear shock mount nut using a 14 mm socket. Loosen the front shock mount nut, but leave it in place for now. Then remove the inside shock mount nut using a ratcheting box end wrench. Support the bottom of the shock absorber with one hand and remove the upper shock mount nut with the other. Once the shock absorber is loose, slide it out of the bottom. Position the supplied shock absorber spacer on top of the shock absorber. Make sure the low range off-road emblem is perpendicular to the lower shock absorber mounting bolt. Secure the shock absorber spacer by installing the three supplied flange nuts. Snug these nuts using a 14 mm socket. Place a bar through the lower shock mount hole. Then torque the nuts until 47 foot-pounds is reached. To create space for the shock absorber assembly, move the hub assembly and drive axle rearward. Feed the shock absorber up in reverse of the way it was removed. Be sure the low range emblem is facing outward toward the upper ball joint. Once the spacer is properly positioned in the upper shock mount, install the three supplied flange nuts. Snug these nuts using a 14 mm socket. Once they're snug, continue tightening using a torque wrench until 47 foot pounds is reached. Swing the lower control arm back into position Align the lower shock mount and install the lower shock mount bolt. Once the bolt is in place, install the washer and then the nut. While holding the bolt, 
Torque the nut to 61 foot-pounds. Place a ratchet strap over the upper control arm, under the lower control arm, and hook it on the back side. Once secure, tighten the ratchet strap. Continue tightening the ratchet strap until the lower ball joint bracket is about an inch away from the steering knuckle. Position a jack stand directly below the lowest part of the lower control arm. Then lower the vehicle. Adjust the position of the jack stand so that the contact point of the lower control arm is centered on the jack stand. Continue lowering the vehicle until the ball joint bolt can be installed. Apply red thread locker to the ball joint bolt. Using a pry bar, align the ball joint bracket with the steering knuckle and install the front bolt. Take extra care here and see that this bolt is not cross threaded. Once the bolt is started, continue tightening it by hand until there is about an eighth of an inch gap between the ball joint bracket and the steering knuckle. Install the rear ball joint bolt in the same way as the front. Once the rear bolt is tight, tighten the front bolt. Then raise the vehicle and torque both ball joint bracket bolts to 118 foot-pounds. Remove the ratchet strap. Now move to the passenger side front wheel and complete all the steps necessary to install the passenger side shock absorber spacer. Once the passenger side shock absorber spacer has been installed, reconnect the sway bar. Insert the sway bar link stud through the steering knuckle. Install the nut. Hold the nut with a 17 mm box end wrench and tighten the nut by turning the stud with a 9 mm Allen socket. Once the nut becomes tight, Torque the nut to 52 foot-pounds. Connect the driver's side sway bar link in the same way. The next step is installing the bump stop spacers. Beginning on the passenger side, unthread the bump stop using a pipe wrench or large channel lock pliers. Apply blue thread locker to the threads. Install the supplied bump stop spacer. Reinstall the bump stop and tighten it with the pipe wrench. Now install the bump stop spacer on the driver's side bump stop. Beginning on the passenger side, hold the nut with a 19 mm box end wrench and remove the bolt using a 22 mm socket. Remove the driver's side differential mount bolt in the same way. Ready the supplied differential mount bolt by installing the supplied washer. Then install the large original washer that was removed earlier. Position the supplied spacer as shown and install the bolt. Then install the supplied flange nut but leave it loose for now. Now install the passenger side differential mount bolt in the same way. Hold the nut with a 19 mm box end wrench and snug the bolt using a 19 mm socket. Then snug the driver side differential mount bolt in the same way. Once both bolts are snug, torque the bolts to 101 foot pounds. In order to reset the alignment adjustments as close as they were originally, Position all four adjustment cams on the marks you made before disassembly. It's important to note these adjustments are only to get the alignment close. This vehicle will need to be professionally aligned once the kit installation is complete. Failure to do so will likely result in excessive tire wear, poor handling, and unsafe braking. The next step is to install the front wheels. Beginning on the passenger side wheel, position the wheel on the studs. Install the lug nuts and snug them in an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern. Install the driver side wheel and snug the lug nuts in the same way. Once the lug nuts are snug, 
lower the vehicle to where the wheels are just touching the floor. Then continue tightening the lug nuts in a crisscross pattern until 81 foot-pounds is reached. Continue lowering the vehicle until the full weight is on the wheels. Bounce the front of the vehicle to ensure that the inner control arm bushings are in their normal ride height position. Then torque all four inner control arm bushings to 100 foot-pounds. Raise the vehicle back up. Notice this hook, which is one of two hooks located behind the front bumper. They are to match up with these holes in the front of the belly pan. To install the belly pan, match up the holes with the hooks. Once the front is hooked, let the belly pan hang. Position the supplied spacer on the top side of the belly pan and install the supplied bolt. Then install the bolt and spacer on the other side, as shown. Install the two front belly pan bolts as well. Snug all four bolts and then torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Now to the installation of the rear lift. Place an under-hoist jack stand under the driver's side rear axle housing and lift slightly. With the rear axle assembly supported, remove the U-bolt nuts using a 19mm socket. Remove the U-bolt plate and remove both U-bolts. Disconnect the lower shock absorber from the bracket by holding the bolt with a 17mm box end wrench and removing the nut with a 17mm socket. Lower the rear axle housing about 3 inches or just enough to make room for the lifting block. Before installing the lifting block, ensure that the F is oriented toward the front of the vehicle and the locating dowel facing downward. With the lifting block positioned properly, raise the rear axle assembly. While lifting the rear axle assembly, guide the leaf spring center pin into the hole of the lifting block. Be sure to keep your fingers from between the block and the spring. Install the rear supplied U-bolt. Be sure the bump stop is positioned properly. Install the front supplied U-bolt. Reinstall the U-bolt plate. Install a supplied washer and nut on each of the U-bolt studs. Snug the U-bolt nuts in an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern using a 19 mm deep socket. Just snug is good enough for now. We'll torque them later. Raise the rear axle housing until the shock absorber aligns with the bracket. Once aligned, install the bolt, then the washer, and then the nut. Just leave the nut loose for now. Remove the under hoist safety stand and place it under the passenger side of the rear axle assembly. Once the axle is supported, repeat all the steps necessary to install the passenger side lifting block. Tighten the U-bolt nuts using an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern until 100 foot-pounds is reached. Torque the lower shock absorber nut to 43 foot-pounds. 
torque the U-bolt nuts and the shock absorber nut on the driver's side using the same method used on the passenger side. Now let's take some measurements and compare them to the measurements we recorded initially. Lower the vehicle to the floor and remove the lift arms. To get an accurate measurement, roll the vehicle a few feet. Initially, the front measured 35 inches from the floor. It now measures 38 and 1 8 inches, which is a 3 and 1 8 inch increase. The door handle measured 42 and 8 inches initially. It now measures 44 and a half inches, a 2 and 3 8 inch increase. And finally, the rear fender measured 36 and 3 8 inches. It now measures 38 and 1 8, an increase of 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. It's interesting to note that the front fender and the rear fender are at exactly the same height, 38 and 1 8 inches, which is exactly why we call this our leveling lift kit. It not only lifts the vehicle, but levels it as well. That concludes today's presentation. We remind you that all the parts and supplies required for this job can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.